In lesson 36, you'll be doing some subtracting of fractions and mixed numbers from whole numbers. The best way to learn how to do these is just to do some practice problems. Look at this problem, 6 minus 3 and 1 third. Now what you can do on these is rewrite them vertically. We'll put the 6 up here and then the 3 and 1 third over here. Put a subtraction symbol out there. Now this will be different than just doing regular subtraction when you have to carry over. But it's a similar idea. We need to subtract something from that one-third or subtract one-third from something. We don't have anything above there. There's just like a blank space there. So we could take one away from six and make that a five. And we know that one would be three-thirds. Remember, we have to have a common denominator for subtracting two fractions. So we've taken one away from six, made it a five, and changed that one into a three-thirds. So now we can subtract three-thirds and one-thirds. And so three-thirds minus one-third would just be two-thirds. And now let's subtract the whole numbers. Five minus three is two. So this is similar to adding mixed numbers together. We add the whole number part together, and then we add the fraction parts together separately. Here we'll be subtracting the fraction parts. Sometimes we have to make a fraction by taking away from the whole number, taking one away from the whole number, and converting that into a fraction with the same denominator as the other fraction. We have to have common denominators to add or subtract fractions. So two and two-thirds would be the answer for that problem. Look at this one, one minus two-fourths. Well, that one's pretty easy. You just could change the 1 to a 4 fourths, right? 4 fourths minus 2 fourths. You have common denominators now. Just subtract the numerators. 4 minus 2 is 2 fourths. And you could reduce that too, couldn't you? You could divide above and below. Divide both of those by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 1 half is the simplified form there, or reduced form for that answer. Look at C, 8 minus 4 and 6 eighths. Now that one's a little more complex than B, so let's go ahead and rewrite it like we did in A. We'll put the 8 first. We'll put the 4 and 6 eighths below. We're subtracting that from 8, so we put that at the bottom. And we write our whole numbers above each other and our fraction parts above each other. We don't have a fraction part where the 8 is, so we take away 1 from 8 and make that into an 8 eighths. And so now we can subtract those. Eight eighths minus six eighths is two eighths. Let's just reduce that in our heads. Two eighths would be one fourth, right? And then seven minus four is three. So three and one fourth would be the answer there. Look at practice problem D. This is a story problem. Let's just read it. There were six pizzas on the buffet. One person took five sevenths of a pizza. How much pizza is left on the buffet? Now this is like a sum and some went away story problem like you did back in lesson 11, except now you have fractions to deal with and mixed numbers. Same kind of problem, just a little bit different numbers to work with. So six pizzas on the buffet. One person took five sevenths. How much pizza is left? So we want to subtract five sevenths from the six pizzas to see how much is left. And so we'll have six and then five sevenths. We can write it over here. Okay, remember we write the whole numbers kind of in one column, the fraction parts in another column. We don't have anything down in the five sevenths, so we can just put a zero there. And then six, we need to take away one from six to make that a five and put seven sevenths over here. So we have something to subtract five sevenths from. 7 sevenths minus 5 sevenths, that's equal to 2 sevenths. And then we just do 5 minus 0 is 5. So there are 5 and 2 sevenths slices or pieces of pizza. 5 and 2 sevenths of the pizza is left at the buffet. And if we wanted to, we could write units out after this. 5 and 2 sevenths pizzas. 
use your skills of subtraction and reducing when you need to on here to do parts of these problems in your head like we did B we did a lot of that in our head part of C we did in our head more complicated ones though line up the whole number parts and the fraction parts and then subtract borrowing from the whole number part to make a fraction when you need to okay well that's all for lesson 36